Yes. I don't know why my nails are so itchy like that. Ugh. <laughs> Cheers, everybody! It is uh, June 21st on a Wednesday night. It seems that I can only um, record my vlogs at night. That's fine. I'm okay with it. I've been keeping up with the Joneses, which means that my schedule is working for me, except for a few things. I need to still tweak some stuff out. I've noticed that I'm going to bed late now. I'm not sure if I'm going back into my old routine. I'm a night bird by nature, so I don't know. But, um... This needs to stop. <laughs> I need to be on track. I need to be able to go to bed at a decent time, hour. Uh, I'm aiming for 11.30 or so, so it's not too early. But uh, anyways, I'm, I, th I think I'm doing good. I think I'm doing good. I've been respecting my deadlines, which is awesome. There's so much to be said about a plan of attack. Like the, the merit of planning ahead, planning the subjects, or when a video is due, when you have to film, when you have to edit, when you have to publish. It's just, ah, oh, I'm loving this so much. The only thing yet that I still have to do, <laughs> because it's on my schedule and I have to just kick my butt um, into gear, is to go back to the gym downstairs. I haven't done that, but... Uh, and I've been eating a lot. So I don't want to get back into the weight that I was before the surgery. So I really, really, really need to go downstairs. It will happen. It will happen. Okay. I do not have a lot of material to show you. But I do want to talk to you about something. And um, I will probably need your feedback on that. Or at least your suggest suggestions. Oof. Late at night like this, I think the... The tongue is not working well, <laughs> or the mouth, or the words are not coming out, or I'm just babbling too much, and you know, this is my way, it's it's my mouth's way of saying stop babbling, it just makes talk sense. Okay, so, um, and I am determined this time that I will not edit this vlog, I know I keep saying this, but the editing, man, okay, so the editing, can we just talk about the editing? If you are a YouTuber and, and you've been editing videos, you know how long it takes to edit a video, especially if you're dealing with a computer that is as slow as mine. Um, I'm not kidding when I say sometimes it takes me from three to four and a half hours to edit a video. And I don't think my vlogs should take all that long to edit. And somehow, when I look at the playback and I'm like, oh, okay, you burped in that scene, cut that out. And then it starts from there. And then you start like finagling and doing all these, you know, precise cuts and replay. And anyways, it just, it's too much. So I'm really determined to cut my editing time down to quite a lot. So... Let's keep our fingers crossed for this one. Okay, the first piece of art that I want to share with you is not mine. It's my daughter's, Stephanie. She, of course, most of you know, she's an amazing artist. And um, she's been, she was saying that she's been wanting to get back into art more because she's studying graphics design right now. But uh, she did go to fine art school for, uh, you know, a few sessions and whatnot. She didn't like it. She dropped it, you know whatever. Um, she used to make a lot of portraits. She dropped that too. And now she feels the need to go back into it. So she did this portrait and she also used a medium that she doesn't really, um, has never explored and it's watercolors. <laughs> um, I wonder who influenced her on that, but, um, anyways, she's not here, so I can't ask her, but, um, and she and she gave me the artwork, which meant a lot to me. And when she gave it to me, she says, I really don't know what I'm doing with watercolors. And here is her way of not knowing what to do with watercolors. She doesn't know what she's doing. Like, seriously. Isn't that amazing? I love how she did the background. This is a portrait of um, uh, someone I know. And uh, she, I think what ups well, I don't think she was upset, but I think what disappointed her a bit is that when she added the colors to the face, all of a sudden that person is not as recognizable as he was, but I totally see it. Um, I don't see anything wrong with this at all. I don't know if you do, but I don't. 
So she's quite a talented young lady. So hopefully she'll do more watercolors. I really hope so. Um, but she gave it to me, so I'm quite happy. Okay. Um, the other thing I want to show you is this. So you've seen last week, I did this, right? Well, I, I didn't film my process. No, I just played in my journal and I showed you. I recreated this for my patrons as a technic, technic, <laughs> technical or technique video because um, this was just me playing with the colors. And uh, if you remember, this is peerless watercolors which is not my preferred format for watercolors. They come out on sheets. But I decided to reproduce this galaxy slash universe watercolor into another one. And it turned into this one, which, oh, I really like it. I really, really do. The technique was about how to seamlessly blend colors into each other and try to minimize the water lines and just, uh... Can we not appreciate the colors? So imagine this. Now, this is the same exact colors as this. Okay, let's put them that way. You're going to see them upside down, but you see the difference? So the difference comes in having different papers. This is Strathmore Series 400 in a journal, and it has a lot of size on it, which means I don't think it's as absorbent or it doesn't retain the pigments the same way. This is rough grain arches. Amazing, right? I'm just so in love with the intensity of the colors in this. And I created also these, my glow balls, <laughs> my own vocabulary. Uh, these are stars, obviously, slash planets. Yeah, they're big, but hey, you know what? It's my galaxy. It's my universe, it's my imaginary world, and I like it. <laughs> I love it. And I, for this one, did I? Yes, I use masking as well. Um, and what I ended up doing also is going over some of them because there were a lot of um, stars and it was too much, so I grayed out some of them, but I'm really liking the uh, results. So this um, video, which was super long because most of it was in real time, uh, was given to my patrons as a reward for those that have pledged ten dollars and more and that's a technique video so every month uh, the second month uh, Friday of the month is dedicated to a specific technique it will not always be watercolor but uh, this time around it was okay the next piece of art that I want to show you is the video that I've uploaded on Tuesday morning, which is yesterday. But I know that not everybody watches my art videos. I think a lot of you just watch the art vlogs. So I'm going to show it to you. It's in a big, large moleskin journal. It's huge, heavy. And then I want to talk to you about what I wanted to talk to you about. Not cryptic at all. <laughs> I don't do cryptic. Okay, <laughs> come here, girl. <laughs> Whoa, okay, so this girl, I'm hoping you can still hear me because I'm quite far. Um, yes, so I did that. And that's it. <laughs> no, <laughs> so this whole exercise, if, first of all, this journal is huge. It's a moleskin, like super large, as you can see. And I did not intend to make a face. It was supposed to be a field of flowers, hence that big, I don't even know which way to go, that big flower there, the yellow and magenta flower. And it had a whole bunch in the background and ugh. the more I layered on this, the worse it got. At one point I stopped filming because I had no clue how to recover everything. And then I ended up turning towards drawing a face. And I did that with first graphitone pencils and then uh, finishing that off for darkness with um, the Stabilo Aquarellable, so the hair and the eyes and all that. Anyways, so my nose is still scratchy, I'm sorry. Um, the reason why I want to talk to you about this painting is that 
when I showed it to Steph, because I told her, I prefaced this by saying, you know, Steph, I really wanted to practice facial expression and come and see this. I've made this frowning girl and I was, you know, kind of happy about her. Happy, yes and no. I mean, you know, now that I look at her, I can see where I've gone wrong. Um, so she came in and she saw it, she went, like this and I'm like uh oh what's wrong she says she looks like she's about to murder someone she doesn't look like she's frowning she looks like she's super angry and I said oh okay <laughs> and she says well I like it <laughs> but um so then she went into technical stuff you know because she has a lot of experience in portraits and stuff like that so she went into technical stuff you know like uh the eyes are too far apart you know like the nose is like too the bridge of the nose is too large blah 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 and the frowning is not quite there and then she asked me <laughs> and this is where i want to go uh what reference material did you take for this and I looked at her and I said, well, I didn't because I didn't take any reference material because I'm doing this for YouTube. And she says, and so <laughs> that opened up the Pandora box. So I was telling her about my fear of being accused of copyrights infringement. And I thought to myself, I mean, I'm not going to sell this artwork. It's in a journal. This is for practice. Um, and I made sure that I told you guys it was practicing. Uh, it was me practicing. It, this is not meant to be a tutorial. I'm not, I don't feel that I am experienced enough to show you how to make a face. I'm still like very basic. But she says, Mom, every artist, every portraitist, they have reference material. Unless they've done portraits for so long and they can they have fully memorized every single expression then they can go and create their own you know face without too much reference material but that takes a lot of practice and I'm like well no I think it's easier for me that I don't have to stick to a face that I see I can just do my own but she says you struggled with the expression and that was the intention with this I really wanted I want to master facial expressions and body language and whatnot and so she told me you can't do it without reference material and I'm like but that how am I gonna put a video on YouTube she says you're allowed to do that as long as you're not going to reproduce exactly what it is and you're not selling, I mean, this is in my journal, you're not, sorry about that, you're not selling your journal, you're not gonna sell prints of that. So what's the harm? Harm, what's the harm? Um, but I'm, I'm very, very careful with this. I, you know, I've done a few portraits, but I've always mentioned the origin and they were like specifically meant to be reproductions of a face and that's fine, but I don't want to do this too often. I really want to develop my own faces, if you can say it that way. So she gave me two websites um, of, they're kind of like photo banks that you can actually use for your personal or commercial use. There is no restrictions on these photos, no copyrights will be infringed or you won't infringe on any copyrights. Uh, these are for you to use and I will link them below because I think it's great to have a website like this. I think you are limited to the amount of photos that you can download because you can download them. You can look at them all, but I think uh, they have probably like a larger database with more photos and then you probably have to pay for that. But I mean, I researched very briefly last night. I just punched in, punched in, <laughs> I just punched in portraits and I was flooded with a whole bunch of them. And in fact, I have used one of them in my sketching. Um, I do a sketchbook tour to my patrons every third Monday of the month. And I also do at the end a live, well, a live recorded um, sketching of something. And I use one of them uh, in that video, but um, it's kind of like, I knew I, I know that I know the importance of taking reference material for sure. Um, and because my intention is to practice, 
I think I'm allowed to do that. So I will be doing more. And the reason why I wanted to talk to you about this is because, well, to let you know that, you know, it's okay. Um, I was also told that most of the great masters have had reference. So if you know of any other sources besides the two that I will list below, please let me know. I'd like to have as much choice as possible. Okay, so um, on that topic, I wanted to share with you, I have been wanting to do a, more um, drawings, more paintings, but I'm also fascinated by fantasy art and I sort of do that when I do watercolor carvings or sometimes when I do watercolors and I add doodle on top, I create my own little fantasy world. I haven't done that in a while, but I last year was heavily into that. And I think it was last year that I got these two books. I, and I'm not sure again if I shared them with you, but I want to share them with you now because um, just to let you know that you will see more of that type of art uh, from for me, once in a while, I will still do my floors and whatnot, you know, something that you're used to. But I really want to get into uh, fantasy art. And I bought these two books. So the first one is, well, I don't know if it's the, the one that came first, but whatever. Uh, Dreamscapes, Fantasy World. So this is all about the backdrops, the, the, the worlds, you know, like the, the, the environment and whatnot that you can develop around that theme. And then the other one is more about the fairies, the angels and the dragons and whatnot. So more character development. Um, and the author is the same. Her name is Stephanie Puimunla, I think. And um, I have taken some of uh, some inspirations and just like downright copying um, some stuff in my sketchbook as a practice. And I think I'm going to benefit from that. She also talks about the types of watercolor paper that you, you know, that there are and even like how to stretch your own paper, your watercolor paper. Apparently that's very important. I've done it once only. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, and some great details, photos, you know, it's just a great book. Even if you're not into fantasy art, I think just to learn how to develop some elements, like for instance here, she's going from this initial branch to a full on like embellished uh, tree branch. I think this is fascinating. I love her, you know, her step by step instructions. Um, all kinds of stuff. It's just amazing. And she takes you through one complete scene. Uh, hold on here. Is that it? Oops. Okay. So she'll have like a full on painting like this. And then in the pages following that, she goes step by step on how she went. Like she um, basically lists like the different elements. And then there's a, if I can find it, a step by step. See, this is number 15. So at step number 15, it should look like this. Um, you know, stuff like that. I think it's fascinating and I'm intend to go through all of these books and just practice um, every day. You don't have to do a full scene. It's just, you know, sometimes you just pick up on, for instance, if you want to do like a face like this, you just like practice many times this face and eventually I'm confident that I will find my own style and I'm not saying that I'm going to stick with fantasy heart or heart art or I'm just going to do that I think what I'm trying to do is use these types of illustrations or this type of artwork because it's detailed artwork and I like that um, to eventually come up with a style or it can't hurt. It can't hurt. Bottom line is using reference material, whatever subject it is, as long as you draw every day, um, it can only help. I mean, look at this. See? See what I mean? Like she takes a shape. She shows you how she developed this character out of a and kind of like a, a an S shape, and then you add, you know, the head. So it's it's great. I think it's great. Anyway, so I can't wait to dive into this a little bit more. And the other book I want to talk to you about, I know I've shown it to you, but it's it was um, it was kind of like a revelation to me when I was filming my Frowning Girl. Um, 
because I'm filming upside down. So my camera is an overhead uh, installation, but the camera is flipped the other way. So whenever I import the footage, it comes upside down. So while it's importing and while I'm, I'm like isolating the shots and bring them into my project, I can't flip them before that. So I'm constantly looking at an upside down footage until I get into the actual project. And so while this is all going, I was looking at my girl upside down and um, if you've watched the video, you've seen that I totally struggled with the eyes, the eyes, I couldn't get them similar and they weren't even close at some point. And I'm like, what it is that I need to do? Like, this is like, I can't see where I'm going wrong. And as soon as I saw the footage upside down, I went, oh, of course, this line should be slanted this way, not rounded like this. And the reason why I was able to pinpoint that is that all of a sudden that face, I wasn't looking at it as a face, I was looking at shapes because the face was upside down so it didn't really look so much like a face. It looked like a bunch of geometric shapes. And I think it's easier the eye can forget what the face should look like and interpret the lines for what they truly are. And I get this from reading this book. Like this is the book that I'm not even, the, I'm just like through one chapter, I think. But the importance of looking at a drawing and not for what it is, like if you're looking at a table, you should not look at it as a table, but as a rectangle, four slimmer rectangles, like kind of like deconstruct it right and um, I know that in this book there are exercises where they tell you to draw upside down like take a photo flip it and then draw the photo and apparently everybody who's tried it has been successful so I'm very excited so this is going to be part of my morning art sessions or sketching in my sketchbook and um, I see a lot of improvement in the horizon <laughs> I don't want to toot my own horn but I think I will be able to do it Yes, and that's it. Oh, uh, I wanted to talk to you about, hold on for a second, where are they? Here they are. The graphite tones that I used in my last video. Oh, I love them so much. And I can't wait to try those on watercolor paper. Uh, so for tracing the girl and doing most of the shading, first of all, shading with these is amazing uh, because it's a gradual shading. It's not like using the Stabilo. <laughs> My poor little Stabilo pencil is down to the last nub. Um, but these are just amazing. So here's what they look like. I'm going to try and put them in order and show you the name of it. <laughs> there we are. Okay, so they are a Derwent product. They're called Graphitones, and what they are, are they are graphite pencils, wa water-soluble graphite pencils. And um, they work on acrylic paint because that's how I use them. Of course, they glide more, so you kind of have to have a better control over the water that you add to uh, dissolve them, but... This is what they look like on uh, watercolor paper. And I did like this very quickly. And um, the camera will probably not pick up the difference so much, but this is the 2B, the 4B, 6B, and HB. And I know that if I had applied myself really well, these two colors would be, or these two tones, uh, would be a lot darker because I find there's not a lot of difference between these two but I think I just I scribbled more on this than on this but look at them they're quite <laughs> no here are they cool and I think I love the effect of having um the main element being monochromatic and then in the background having a whole bunch of colors I just love that. I love contrast. You know that. And that is one way to achieve contrast uh, on um, on a painting. And I like it. And I want to use them more. So I wanted to talk to you about them a little bit more. That's it. I'm done. All right. That was a short art vlog. I hope you still enjoyed it. And again, if you have any suggestions as to... If you have any suggestion, poof, suggestions of either websites that have uh, free 
non-restrictive use of photos that artists can use to, um, you know, as reference material or even good, um, like good sources in general for learning how to draw. Uh, I do have a trial um, membership to Skillshare, which is awesome, but it's near its final days. I think I need to make a decision by the end of June and I'm not sure if I'll be able to afford uh, the membership, but I'm going to make my best this week and, you know, the few days that is left for uh, to my free trial to get in there and try and soak up as much knowledge as possible. So um, if you know of any good sources that I could look up online, uh, any good, like I, I, I'm not looking for YouTubers that do the odd tutorials. I'm really looking for in-depth studies on drawing and, you know, all that stuff. So if you know of any good links, please leave them below. Uh, so yeah, I, I got notes. I should look at my notes, see if I'm done. Are we done? Oh, update on the studio tour. I know I promised you a studio tour in June. In fact, it was supposed to be up last week and I decided to do an art video instead. Not last week, this past yesterday. But I'm still working on my big painting. In fact, I haven't touched it <laughs> since I last showed it to you. It's still looking gray, very temperamental. <laughs> All kinds of shades of gray and whoa, it looks in, it's looking scary. But I have a big drop sheet in the back and I kind of don't want to remove that until I'm done. So I'm going to wait until I'm done this painting and then I promise you I will do a studio tour in the meantime. Thanks so much for watching and if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. Also, if you like this video and you want to see more, please click the big thumbs up and subscribe. If you haven't already done so, make sure you click the little bell that will tell you every time I upload. Although I was told it doesn't always work. So the best thing to do is just keep on coming to my channel and see if I've uploaded anything. Uh, I do try to post on my social media when I have a new video, like on Facebook or Instagram. I haven't been active in a while, but anyways, um, one way or another, you'll find out <laughs> I have a new video. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see, see you later. Bye!